Let's go on a culinary tour of the Middle East. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. It's a cuisine that's becoming more and more popular in this country and especially in Miami. So get on the leading edge of the trend and join me for Middle Eastern food here on SoFlo Taste. Welcome all to the Goya Kitchen at JA World in Coconut Creek. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. Are you the person who has embraced Middle Eastern food or the person who thinks it's too exotic? Well, each of us is in the right place because today I thought it would be fun to give you aficionados and you novices great Middle Eastern recipes. So let's get cooking. We're going to start with my favorite, favorite, favorite Middle Eastern chef who lives in England, Yotam Odolenghi. Odolenghi's books have become incredibly popular. Every single recipe is more beautiful than the next. And I saw this beet dip and I've been wanting to try it so badly. So here's our chance. So you take some beets. Um, all he does is throw whole beets in the oven until they're soft. About a 400 degrees, takes about 45 minutes to an hour depending on the size of the beet. Once they cool a little bit, peel them, chop them up, and this is what they look like. We're gonna throw this into a food processor Add a cup of yogurt, and this is just plain yogurt. You can use Greek or just regular plain yogurt. I prefer Greek yogurt always for this type of cuisine. Some spicy, he asks for red chilies, so we used Fresno chilies, seeded and chopped. Just a little bit of chopped garlic and a little bit of salt to start out. this processes, I'm going to go ahead and add in olive oil, nothing crazy fancy, but good olive oil, some date syrup, one of my favorite things. There's pomegranate syrups and there's date syrups. So good on dessert. And a little bit of za'atar, a uh, Middle Eastern spice you'll see a lot of, which we're going to spice onto our pita bread over here, a little bit of oil and za'atar and salt. And we're going to throw that in the oven. and the rest will go into the beet puree. Let's go ahead and kind of push everything down off the sides. It smells really good considering it's just a bunch of chopped beets. It smells delicious. All right, let's throw our pita bread in the oven. That's just gonna take a couple seconds and let's finish this beauty off. We need some sliced scallions for garnish. And these are beautiful, homegrown. I'm so excited. I love growing my own stuff, scallions. Okay, let's go ahead and take some of this beautiful beet dip and put it into a bowl. I highly recommend you using your favorite pretty dishes for things like this. Middle Eastern food just really deserves a gorgeous plate. So let's do a little spread for that. Just like so. And then we're going to crumble some goat's cheese right over the top. 
some hazelnuts that have been toasted and just crushed a little for texture. This is really such a good recipe. Some sliced scallions. This is going to be my topping because I have to do everything like this. A little bit of olive oil right over the top of it. Some Malden sea salt. And then let's go get one of our pitas. Ah, oh, delicious. I'm going to leave the rest in there for the rest of the day. We have a few beautiful recipes that will go beautifully with pita. And there you have it. Our first dish. Thank you, Chef Otolenghi. We've got our beautiful beet dip. Come right back after the break, but before you go, all of my recipes, including today's, are available on the Sofalo Shows webpage. Just scan this quick response code for immediate access to the fabulous Sofalo Shows page. You'll also see the QRC on the ingredients list throughout the show. Now come right back. Come back to the Goya Kitchen at JA World. Michelle and the food. This is SoFlo Taste. I'm design expert Elena Capra, and after Michelle, join me for SoFlo Home Project here on Local 10. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste and my show all about the food from the Middle East. We hear about the Middle East all the time in the news, but do you really know what countries they're talking about? Well, here you go alphabetically. Bahrain, Cyprus, Iran, Iraq, Israel, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Syria, United Arab Emirates, and Yemen. There you go, your social studies class is adjourned. Now back to my cooking school. So this is my if I were to choose one favorite recipe, this would be it. This is called amjadra, spelled mejadra, but it's really called amjadra. And what this is, is lentils with rice topped with a ton of very dark, crisp onions. The onions change depending on who's making it. A lot of people don't add flour. I'm going to add flour to make them crispy. Um, maybe it's Americanizing a little bit, but it's just addictive. So good. So let's just jump right in and get it going. Here we have cooked lentils. We need cooked lentils to cook with the raw rice to make amjadra perfect. So I just cooked them according to package instructions. So we're gonna start out um, toasting some spices in oil and then we're gonna toast the rice in that same oil. We're gonna start with some cumin seeds and some coriander seeds and they're gonna stay whole inside of this rice. Normally, you toast spices in a dry pan when you're using them, uh, especially if you're gonna grind them afterwards. You never really wanna toast spices in oil because they'll never stay, you'll never be able to measure them, you'll never be able to grind them. However, if a spice is staying within the recipe you're making, like this in the rice, you'll toast them in oil so that everything can later toast in that oil and gather all that delicious flavor that that oil will then have. And keep those spices, because coriander is delicious whole like this, as are cumin seeds. There's nothing offensive about it. It's not like too big in the mouth. So let's go ahead and add on our dry spices. We have turmeric, allspice, cinnamon, not a spice, but a little bit of sugar. Just a tiny, tiny whisper of sugar. Salt. And finally, some black pepper. Let's go ahead and add to this the rice. This is basmati rice. And you don't need anything fancy like chicken stock or anything to make this. Just some water is perfect. So basmati is one cup basmati to one and a half cups of liquid, no matter what liquid you use. And that's just what we're doing. But right before I add in 
the water, I'm going to go ahead and add in the lentil. And normally, amjadra is made with a brown lentil, sometimes a green lentil. You don't want to use the black beluga lentils. They're fancy, they're beautiful, but they don't break down the way these do, and they don't soften the way they do. I'm going to add the water. And the onions are also ready to fry. Let me go ahead and cover this up. I'm going to add some more lentil in a little bit. Keep that nice and low. Cooks just as long as any rice does. For the onions, I have a bowl of some julienne onions. This is only a third of what I'll be making because this takes a lot of onion. You basically just toss your onion in the flour and go ahead and add them to a pot of your favorite cooking oil or vegetable oil, peanut oil, whatever it is that you like. And you don't want to walk away from the frying onion because you want every bit of it to get crispy and to get caramelized. So what you're going to do, you're just going to kind of keep moving them around a little bit. And I'll show you what they're going to need to look like. I have a colander here with a paper towel. So this is what they're gonna look like. They're beautifully crisp and caramelized. And this, mm, deliciousness will be the topping on the amjadra. Come right back so we can keep on going with this day because we have so many delicious things to do. I can't even keep up. See you in a minute. Celebrate the food of South Florida at SoFloTaste.com. It's the place to ask me a question or make a comment, especially good comments. Again, SoFloTaste.com. We'll see what's cooking on SoFloTaste right after this. Welcome back to SoFloTaste. As I am every week, I'm coming to you from the incredible JA World. It's a great educational venue for our kids. For more JA information, visit jasouthflorida.org or call 954-979-7100. Now back to something good from the Middle East. All right, everybody, our mjadra, or rice lentil and fried onion dish, is a cooking. Let's jump into my next dish. I'm gonna actually bathe eggplant in something called charmoula. I learned about charmoula when I worked in Morocco. Really good with seafood, but it's doubly good with eggplant. So let me teach you charmoula, and I hope you fall in love with it. I wish you could smell it, because it's heavenly, and you can use it for so many different things. Just put a little spoonful on top of your favorite fish dishes, on top of shrimp, on top of rice, whatever it is that you think would go with a tomato and spice mixture, it'll work. Chermula is yummy, yummy, yummy. All right, so the way that I learned to grate tomatoes was in Spain as well as in Morocco. You cut them in half. You take them on the large hole of a box grater and you just grate, just like so, until you get all the way to the skin. And luckily, my son has built me a compost, so these skins will go into my compost. Keep going. You're not gonna get a huge amount of meat, but you get a pretty good, I would say, we're probably gonna get about a cup full from two tomatoes. I have a little saucepan ready because this sauce needs to be cooked down a little bit. Heat up my saucepan to about a medium heat. Go ahead and add a little bit of oil to this. We're gonna cook some minced garlic. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the spices first, just like I did for the amjadra. For this, we have coriander, cumin, smoked paprika, and some Aleppo, or if you want, chili flake. But since Aleppo is from this beautiful region, we're gonna go ahead and use that today. Our garlic is starting to bubble, which is a perfect time to add our seasonings. We're also gonna add a little bit of lemon zest, or if you happen to have some preserved lemon at your home, go ahead and chop up some of the peel of the preserved lemon and add that to this. I think lemon zest is also quite delicious in this recipe. 
Let's add the grated tomato and all its juices. Be careful, it might bubble up a little bit. Go ahead and season that heavily because the acid of the tomato needs a little bit of sodium. While that cooks down a little bit, let me show you what to do with the eggplant. So, you're gonna take like a medium size eggplant, not too big, not too small. Go ahead and cut the eggplant right in half. Let's do them all. Okay, and then we're gonna score the eggplant so that the um, tremula really gets in there into those little scored pieces. So go diagonal one way and then cut diagonals the other way. Not too deep into the eggplant. You don't wanna cut through the skin. Keep corn going until you do it all. Now for those of you that don't love eggplant, I highly recommend you try this just once, just to see, because you never know. This tremula really takes over the flavor of the eggplant and it just makes it so yummy. Alternatively, like I said, just eat the tremula with pretty much anything. I think you're gonna go crazy for it. So once this cooks down and becomes more of a paste, it'll really thicken up good. What you're gonna do is take a spoonful and really rub it all over the eggplant. It will be a little thicker at that point. And uh, this amount of tremula is perfect for about four to five eggplant. You're gonna go ahead and put that into a 400 degree oven and you'll cook that for about 30 minutes. You'll get really nice and kind of a crusty caramelization. And then you're gonna wanna cook it covered the rest of the way until it gets really soft. Ours took 45 to 50, five zero minutes in a 400 degree oven, like I said, about half the time uncovered and then the rest of the time covered. Let me show you what it came out like. And these are just beautiful. You see the caramelization? So let's go ahead and show you how to finish this up. We have some fun toppings to put on here. Chef Odalenghi, when he made this, I mean, he does his own tremula his way. Uh, I'm sure it's delicious. I just happen to love making tremula, so I had my own recipe. He tops this off with some um, lovely bulgur and herbs. But instead of doing it that way, I've decided to do it a little differently. So let's show you with about three eggplant. So pretty. So I've got um, a yogurt drizzle, which is basically yogurt, plain yogurt, with a little bit of olive oil, a little water, salt and pepper um, to make it kind of a nice drizzle texture, consistency. And let's go ahead and just drizzle a little bit of the yogurt over the eggplant. Next, we have some beautiful green olives. These are Castelvetranos, but you can use your favorite green olives for a garnish. Oopsie, I'm having an olive party. And then some toasted sliced almonds for crunchiness. And finally, we've got beautiful mint cilantro and parsley. Let's go ahead and pick some of this equally. I would say equal amounts of all three would be lovely. Go ahead and roll this up. Oh, it already smells even better. Let's go ahead and slice nice and fine. And add a little bit of fresh herbs all over the top. Now, this is turning into quite the Middle Eastern feast. Come right back. Soflow Taste will return right after this. Welcome back to Soflow Taste. I am in the middle of plating our beautiful amjadra, which is spiced lentil and rice dish. But hold on, I haven't done the best part yet. I've decided to add a little bit of a drizzle of tahini on this. Maybe not so traditional, but I love it. And then finally, 
let's face it, the best part of the whole thing, the crispy onions. Oh my goodness gracious, I'm so excited. This is so fabulous. I am always trying to add to my collection of foods from different countries and areas. I hope you'll try any or all of this Middle Eastern fare. I promise you'll be adding them to your collection too. Next week, I'm back to basics with my Basics 101 Volume 7. I'll be giving you tips and tricks to use in your kitchen to make your time in your kitchen more efficient and can even step up your game. That's next week here on SoFlo Taste. Now let's see what Elena covers up to and wish her a very good morning. What's up, Elena? How are you? What's next on SoFlo Home Project? Hi, Michelle. Good morning. So today we have great closet design inspiration ideas. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we share with you expert advice on designing your dream closet. Okay, my dear, sounds great. We'll be watching. So Taste Buds, thanks for watching and I'll see you here next week. Goodbye muah, and good taste. I falafel about this pun.